is up guys? Welcome back to the Soup's channel. My name is Matthew Ramos and on this channel I am to entertain, inform, and inspire using the topic of discussion as always, which is superheroes. So guys, in today's video, I'm going to be breaking down a description created by an anonymous Reddit user. Again, because it is an anonymous Reddit user, take this all with a grain of salt. However, potential spoilers ahead. So this description that this Reddit user created, I read it over, went over it, and it's a very in-depth description of the first act of Avengers Endgame. Now, it's so in-depth that, and it, I agree with everything that we've gotten from the footage correlates to this description. So this description can very well may turn out to be the plot of the actual film. So guys, spo again, spoilers ahead. Also, before we get right into the description, Make sure to stay tuned till the end of the video for giveaway details. I'm going to be giving away an Avengers Endgame art canvas and it's beautiful and I feel like you as a superhero fan would want this hanging up in your room. So make sure to stay to the end of the video for giveaway details and without further ado, let's get right into this description. So the beginning of the description begins with the first act of the movie isn't very action heavy but moves very quickly and covers a lot of ground. Tony and Nebula are trapped in space. The whole opening is a spiritual reimagining of Tony's escape from the cave from Iron Man 1. He uses a piece of Nebula to repair the ship and escape back to Earth. Then we get the title card Avengers Endgame. We then see Thanos on Titan 2 alone and meditating. Gamora appears to speak with him. She forgives him for his actions and apologizes for her own. Gamora then disintegrates to reveal that he's using the gauntlet to do some weird ass puppet show for himself with the image of Gamora. This shows the audience that while still being damaged, the infinity gauntlet still works. Ant-Man is falling through the quantum realm. He trips through time, seeing the past and the future laid out before him. He sees himself becoming Ant-Man, going to prison, and even gets a glimpse of his daughter years down the road. He then tries to exit the realm as close to the present as possible, but lands a couple of weeks later than intended. How convenient. He exits on the roof of the Van Dyne and Pym equipment. No one is to be seen. After some New York City post-snap establishing shots, we catch up with Captain America and Rhodey at the SNAP support meeting that we've seen in the Super Bowl trailer and Avengers Endgame trailer 2. The scene makes it clear that Cap has absolutely no intention of moving on. Thor has found a place for his people to live and Rocket has joined him as Rocket doesn't really have anyone else. We get a short Valkyrie cameo here. Thor wants to find Thanos ASAP and avenge the, de the dead by killing him. Valkyrie insists it's dangerous for the Avengers to strike back before they're ready. It's at this point that Rocket receives a signal from the Benatar headed towards Earth. He and Thor intercept the ship as it lands. Rocket is super bummed to see that everyone but Nebula is dead. He comments on Stark's impressive modification of the ship and the two hit it off immediately. Widow and Banner speak at the Avengers HQ, and they still aren't really sure where they stand with each other. Steve and Rhodey eventually join the group at the HQ. Steve and Natasha want to try to do some something to avenge the dead. Rhodey and Banner are ready to give up and don't believe anything can be done. Tony makes a stop at home to see Pepper. He makes it clear that he needs to fix what happened, and she accepts it, so he leaves. A computer alarm alarm sounds at the Avengers HQ and the group goes to see that Fury's beacon has stopped transmitting the message that led them to it in the first place. Captain Marvel shows up looking for Fury and they begin to explain things to her. Tony, Thor, Nebula and Rocket approach the Avengers HQ. Thor senses an infinity stone nearby and they prepare to fight with Thanos as they soar into the compound. Captain Marvel then engages in a skirmish with the un understandably trigger-happy Tony and company before Steve, Rhodey, and Widow 
break up the fight. Thor tells the rest that Captain Marvel gives off the same energy as an Infinity Stone. Banner then asks if he can take some scans of her. Tony and Steve finally reunite. They don't speak about their differences and only engage in an awkward small talk. Thor expresses his wishes to go after Thanos and Tony doesn't think it's worth the risk. Tony explains that he wants to fix things just as badly as they all do, but that he's made the mistake of running into things head first too many times and if they're going to attempt anything, it needs to be done carefully. The next day, Ant-Man shows up at the Avengers HQ. His daughter and family have all disappeared and he's freaked out. Rhodey makes a joke about how many people have shown up at the door in the last day. Then Ant-Man explains what happened with Thanos. Ant-Man explains the breakthrough that they had with the Quantum Realm. Scott is convinced that they can go back in time to change the events of the past and stop Thanos, but Tony makes it clear that changing the past is drastically too dangerous. Ant-Man is hysterical and begs Tony to try anything, telling him about how he saw his older daughter in the Quantum Realm and believes that some reality where she is alive must exist. This strikes a chord within Tony. Banner finishes analyzing his scans of Captain Marvel and speaks with Tony. He tells him that Captain Marvel is almost a perfect replica of an Infinity Stone herself, even more powerful than Scarlet Witch. And this leads Tony to the idea that he may be able to replicate the stones with the right technology. This would enable them to retrieve the stones in the past without drastically, drastically upsetting space and time. Tony then goes to Wakanda with Banner, Captain Marvel, Rocket, Nebula, and Rhodey to look into some of Shuri's research and her scans of vision. They are able to get some useful information that will help them create something to control the stones. Umbaku pledges to help them should the need arise. Tony asks him to continue using their tech to help the world deal with the repercussions of the snap. The rest of the group go look for Clint. They run into him showing off his new combat skills as Ronin. They manage to recruit him. On Titan 2, Thanos has another conversation with a young Soulstone Gamora. She shows him all of the souls he snapped. Now the group begin to plan their assault on Thanos. What a description that was guys. From beginning to end, it was so detailed and it was very well structured. And you can tell that this Reddit user definitely put a lot of effort into constructing this whole thesis. Now guys, this doesn't end here. There is a part two to this description that discusses the second act of Avengers Endgame. And guys, after reading this second act, shit gets crazy. So make sure to tune into that. I'll be making another video on the second act of Avengers Endgame coming off of this Avengers Endgame, you know, movie description. And I'll be breaking that down in a separate video as the description is extremely long. So there you guys have it. Let me know in the comment section down below what do you guys think of this description. And remember, I'm doing a giveaway of a very beautiful piece of Avengers Endgame art. It's a concept art from a user over on Instagram. Make sure to check them out linked in the description. But in order to win this giveaway, all you guys have to do is like this video, comment down below and subscribe to my channel for a chance to win this beautiful piece of Avengers Endgame art. So there you guys have it. If you guys enjoyed this video, make sure to subscribe and hit that like button. Thank you guys for watching. I hope you guys enjoyed and see you guys next time.